Okay, this is Ted Hicks. Um, as I mentioned in episode one of All Stars, this is episode two, we had, truthfully, it's a two-hour show. We're breaking, we had to break it up for some of our radio partners, one and one. Um, we're going to jump right back quickly into an interview with um, the co-founder of Baby Pod Pants, Tiffany Copan. Um, followed up will be Randy Redmond Oster. We're going to talk about empower, empowered patients, improved outcomes. And then at the 30-minute segment, we're going to have Rosalind Ross and Danny Thompson talk about the NBA All-Star Game. So now we're joining part two of the interview. Tiffany, we're back. Sorry about that. That's Okay. Yeah, we got we got so we got radio partners that want me to only air one hour at a time, and it's the business behind the business. So, t- tell me what else is going on with you. Um, well, there's a lot. There's a lot to me. <laughs> I'm only, <laughs> I, well, I, I'm I'm just one of those people that can't stay idle. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I have a lot on my plate, you know, and I don't mind it. You know, I, I just, I have this need to just make a difference and this need to, you know, just make life easier, you know. So that's what I do. I, I sit back and I tinker, you know, and create and dream about things. <laughs> just a part of it. <laughs> so was it something when you were a, a little inner city girl that you said, hey, when, when, I, when I grow up, I want to do X, Y, and Z? I mean, what were you? What were some of your thoughts when you were, you were, you know, you were younger well, and you were like, "Hey." Well, um, I have to be honest. I, I didn't come from you know a great situation. Um, I came from this inner city of Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a proud Baltimorean, but Baltimore is rough. It's a rough town, and um, you know, you 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 just you. You come. You either come out of that stronger, or you come out of it as a victim and blaming everybody. You know. Um, and I decided to come out as a fighter. You know, I come out and I kick some butt. <laughs> That's just what I do. And so, so having those, you know, experiences in Baltimore it just made me want to do do things different. It actually, you know, inspired me to to want to create things. You know, to make life easier. That's good. That's good. So I do have to ask you this. Mm-hmm. With all that you do, with, you know, number one, you're a parent first, with mm-hmm. the businesses that you're dealing with, how do you fit it all in a, into a day, into your 24 hours? Well, that is an interesting question. <laughs> how do I do it? Um what I do really is it's all about work-life balance, you know. Um, like every working mom, inside or outside the home, there's never enough time. I mean, not enough hours in the day. So I'd have to say that having lupus makes that doubly hard, um, especially when pain and fatigue and, you know, the brain fog comes into play. So um, being able to work from home allows me to work from my bed. You know, not having to worry about answering to a manager, um, you know, one that, you know, throws out any kind of crazy ideas or wide sweeping comments about my health. You know what I mean? Stressing me out. Um, I just, you know, I have an open door policy for my kids, so not a lot of work done gets some gets done some days. <laughs> I just wish some of my accounts had midnight hours, and that would be a lot easier. Like, like right now, it's so perfect, you know, having sitting here talking to you. Um, you just basically everything is balanced. You know, when the kids sleep, I nap. I mean, I uh, I work, and you know, when I, the kids go to bed, I I work. You know, I keep basically normal entrepreneur hours. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Oh, it makes all the sense in the world. It definitely makes all the sense in the world. Um, I wanna. You know what? You're definitely gonna have to come back. You definitely gonna have to come back because I think we, we there, there's <laughs> there's so many different layers here that 
it's it's more of a tease just talking with you for a couple of minutes that we we got to have you back on so we can talk about really more of the battle of the struggle against you know bringing awareness to lupus mm-hmm. um i really want to definitely have you back so we can focus on that because it's it's really important it's so so important i mean i think of my friends that um um, you know, friends that have lost family members due to like Alzheimer's and 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 things that, you know, that are rarely mentioned. It's yeah, like I it mean, just doesn't happen or it doesn't exist. Well, I, I'll leave you with this. Um, someone asked me a question, you know, and I like to share this one. This is pretty cool. Someone asked me um, if I were a superhero, who would I be? And it was like I was like, really, you know, that's, that's a cool question. But I came up with it came up with it, I would be one-third of each of these women, okay? I'd be one-third Lori Grainer, uh, one-third Barbara Corcoran, and one-third Oprah Winfrey. And the reason for that, Lori Grainer, because she's a, pow- a, like a, pretty, a pretty powerful innovator, you know, of creation. And then Barbara Corcoran, because she's brilliant and brash and she handles herself really, really well. And Oprah Winfrey, because she has the power to communicate to the masses and, you know, to, to bring, you know, her message of humanitarianism, you know, together. The combination of those three women would be great, and they will make the world a better place. I hear you loud and clear, and I think you might have booked yourself for next week. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you booked yourself for next week, miss. So, listen, I want to give you a round of applause. I want to know the best way to get in contact with you via social media. Uh, Social media, uh, my Twitter account, personal Twitter account is uh, at Miss Toy, and that's M-S-T-O-I. Or um, even my Instagram account is pretty cool. Um, people love following me there. I get to be myself on Instagram. So um, that's at MZT Capone. Um, I let you mispronounce my name. I didn't mind that too much, but it is Capone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why didn't you, okay. you should have checked me right at the door. You should have checked <laughs> me at the door. Come on. It's Listen, okay. I am <laughs> on Instagram as, as the real Ted Hicks, so I will be following you later. Okay, very cool, very cool. Looking forward to uh, staying in touch. We'll definitely stay in touch. Keep stay your in. your your schedule open next week because okay. we're definitely going to have you come back. Okay? okay. Thank you so much All for right. joining us. Thank you. And that was Tiffany Capone. I got it right this time. All right, Tiff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank her so much for um, joining us, talking about her story. Um, Next up, we have Randy Redman Oster. Um, Her Twitter handle, Protocol123, it's about empowered patients and improved outcomes. Um, Randy, thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, It's wonderful being here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And once again, another person... To show you that the the strength of social media and the strength of social networking, Randy and I met through Twitter, just talking about our, our you know what we do during the day or do during the evenings with our, our various brands. So, Randy, tell me about empowered patients, improved outcomes because it was a very powerful story. Well, that you it, have and to tell it, you here. know it. it I, I, and I just yes, want to open up the mic to you. Wonderful. Thank you. The um, My son has Crohn's disease, and it's another autoimmune disease, sort of like the previous person. And when I was in the hospital with him, I didn't know much about the healthcare world. And what I discovered was it's important that we um, know how to ask questions and that we advocate for ourselves The healthcare community cares deeply, the people care deeply, but it's a complex system and there's so much information at a very emotional time 
that what I learned is if that if we are empowered, we can actually improve our own outcomes. And from that, I then wrote down the tips, the tools, and the tricks that I used to help my son thrive with um, Crohn's disease to really help other people as well. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, and I didn't know that the previous guest, you know, um, had, had an autoimmune disease. So it's just ironic that we had both of you just lined up, you know, back to back on the show. And I don't know if it's God or if it's, I mean, what it is. But it, so so tell us, go ahead. No, no, I think that it's, um, you know, sometimes the world works because there's people out there listening and they're saying, you know, help me, how do I do this? And and the other person mentioned the number of people that have their diseases. And in this country, we have 130 million people that have a chronic disease. There are 8 oh million children that have chronic diseases. And there are parents listening right now, and they're going, how do I do this? How do I help my kid survive and thrive when when they're in pain? Or this isn't what I expected. It, it doesn't seem fair. And how do we feel grateful? And how do we um, overcome? And so I think that the reason that maybe we lined up was because there were so many people looking for answers, and, and I, I did learn a lot, and I do like to share, like your other caller, some of the tips and tricks that I learned because um, when you're suffering, it's really hard to, um, to learn. And if you have a loved one, um, if you know some of the tricks, that can really help you help them. You're so true because it's about the um, – what you have with um, – excuse me – what you have with Questing Protocol, your book, I mean, it's that guide for parents and caretakers. You know, it's – it's it's your memoir is not only – it's practical, it's compassionate, it's focused, and it's all about the, you know, what can you do now? So if you yes. can go into your book and tell us about it, tell us about the tips, tell us about, you know, when there's a health crisis that, you know, a parent might be dealing with, you know, it's, it's of course you're going to have, you know, family will come in to support you, but if they don't have the, the information and or, you know, the, the medical background or the knowledge on the specific disease, you know, I guess your guidebook is something that would be really helpful to, to us parents out here. I mean, I've never, as a parent, I've never had to deal with something like this. And God knows that in my heart that I hope I never have to, but who knows? Who knows? So if you could tell us a, a few tips and just, you know, some of your thoughts from your book. Sure. Well, you know, um, when I wrote the book, I actually wrote it as my son was in the hospital. So it's in the present tense, and it's a story that takes you on the journey of what I went through, the the joys. There were moments of joy. There's laughter because some of the stuff is crazy that you have to go through. And then there's also the tears. And what I did was I said, um, how do I share that so that other people can learn how you navigate the system? And I'll give a couple of examples. One of the things I learned was don't be afraid to ask why. Why are we doing this? What do you need to do that for? Some people are very afraid to ask why because they, they don't want to offend anyone. And what I started to discover is that when I asked why, there were times where the reasons didn't seem to make sense for my son. And what that did was it empowered me to say no. And it can be very scary. What do you mean you say no to the doctor? Well, sometimes it's the right thing to do. And, and here's a quick example. My son had had... 